Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Kai, and in today's video, we're comparing two popular mirrorless cameras, the Canon R6 and the Canon R7. These cameras may share some similarities, but they also have some notable differences that can make a difference depending on your photography and video production needs. So let's dive right in and explore some of the main differences and hopefully help you with your decision making if you're on the fence about which one of these to get. First up, let's talk about the sensor sizes. The Canon R7 offers extra resolution with its 32.5 megapixel APS-C format CMOS sensor. This combined with the APS-C crop factor can be a nice advantage when you need that extra reach, especially for wildlife or sports photography. On the other hand, the Canon R6 has a 20.1 megapixel full frame sensor, which delivers superior dynamic range and less noise at higher ISO values. Next, let's discuss the autofocus performance. Both cameras feature dual pixel CMOS AF2 with a significant number of autofocus points. The Canon R6 has over 6,000 for the 1.0 AF mode, over 1,000 for tracking, and the R7 has just under 6,000 for the 1.0 AF mode, but only 651 for tracking. They also offer eye autofocus for portraits and animals. However, when it comes to challenging subjects like birds in flight, as an example, the R6 has the upper hand. Now let's talk about speed. The R7 boasts a faster continuous shooting speed, reaching up to 15 frames per second, and even 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter. However, it's important to note that the highest FPS of the R7 is affected by excessive rolling shutter. On the other hand, the R6 may have a slightly slower continuous shooting speed, but compensates with a better buffer capacity, which means that if you were to shoot your photos in RAW, by the time you've hit the max buffer, the R7 would have shot 51 RAW files compared to the 240 RAW files of the R6. Moving on to the video capabilities now, both the R6 and R7 offer impressive video features, including 4K video recording up to 60 frames per second, 10-bit 422 internal recording with log or HDR, and excellent image quality. Yes, there are log filming options on the Canon crop frame R7 camera, which I think is awesome. So if you want to get that cinematic look, then I'd say the R7 is definitely an up and coming contender. However, the R6 delivers optimal performance in both 4K 30p and 60p, while the R7's best quality is really found in the 30 frames per second. Additionally, the Canon R6 has better high ISO performance for low light videography, which in my opinion is essential for professional video shoots such as weddings and other events. Saying that though, there is a massive caveat here with the Canon R6 that I have unfortunately experienced, and that is the overheating issue when shooting video, which makes it somewhat unreliable for extended shooting sessions. I was actually filming an online course for an influencer last summer using the Canon R6 in 4K, and we could only shoot in 45 minute intervals before we got the overheating warning sign. So bear this in mind for your video productions. I would probably not use the Canon R6 for another big shoot, something like an event or wedding, because of this overheating problem. On the other hand, the R7 performs much better in this regard, allowing you to shoot for more than two hours without any interruptions. When it comes to the electronic viewfinder, the EVF and rear LCD, the R6 takes the lead. It features a larger and higher resolution EVF, making it more comfortable to use, especially if you wear glasses. Both cameras offer a similar rear LCD with a very angle and touch sensitive screen. Now let's talk about the design and customization. Both of these cameras are comfortable to work with, but the R6 does have a few extra buttons for quick access for essential functions. On the other hand, the R7 offers more customization options, allowing you to tailor your camera's controls to your liking. However, it is worth mentioning that the unusual dial joystick solution on the R7 can make the user experience a little bit frustrating. Also, both of these cameras are weather sealed. They have durable sealed bodies that are designed to protect the camera from dust and moisture, making them suitable for use in a variety of outdoor environments. One of the things that you probably will notice about the R7 and R6 when it comes to filming is that there is only an IPB compression option. There is no all eye compression. So if you're a fan of the EOS R and you love that all eye compression because of the quality, then again, neither of these cameras shoots in all eye. Remember that when it comes to your video needs. 
you will probably be happy to hear that they both have dual SD card slots. Both cameras support high speed memory cards with fast read and write speeds, which are necessary for capturing high quality photo and videos at high frame rates and resolutions. When it comes to connectivity, both cameras have a USB type C port for transferring data and charging the camera, as well as a HDMI port for connecting to external monitors or TVs. They also have a 3.5 millimeter microphone port and headphone port for audio recording and playback. They also both have built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities, which allows them to connect to a smartphone or other device for transferring images and controlling the Canon remotely using the Canon Connect app. The Canon Connect app has actually been playing up with me recently. I think Canon, you need to sort that out guys. You you might also be wondering about the battery life. The R6 offers good battery life, particularly with the newer LPE6NH type batteries, and you can shoot approximately 310 shots per charge, but the R7 goes a little further, almost up to 400 shots per charge. This can be an advantage, especially for long photography sessions or when you're traveling. Lastly, let's talk about price. The Canon R6 is currently selling for $1,999 on the US Canon store and £1,899 on the UK Canon store, while the R7 comes in at $1,399 on the US store and £1,450 on the UK Canon store. So the Canon R7 is a little more affordable compared to the R6, making it an attractive option for budget conscious photographers who still want excellent image quality and performance. But saying that, with the release of the R6 Mark II, I suspect that you might be able to get a decent secondhand original Canon R6 for as much as a new Canon R7, so it might be worth shopping around for a good deal. So who should consider getting a Canon R6 or R7 and why? Well, each camera has its own strengths and weaknesses to keep in mind, whether you prioritize resolution, dynamic range, autofocus, video capabilities, or battery life, it's important to choose the camera that aligns with your specific photography or video needs and preferences. For example, if you're looking for a camera for wildlife photography, then the R7 would be a great option for the extra zoom you get from the crop factor. If you are a filmmaker wanting to shoot in low light conditions for movie making, then the R6 with its full frame 20.1 megapixel sensor might be right up your street. From experience, I wouldn't recommend this for important events like weddings because of the overheating issue. If you're looking to vlog or do travel videos, the R7 is a great option because of the filming capabilities, the stabilization features, and longer battery life. To be honest, these cameras are relatively similar, and I believe most of your decision-making is going to come down to a couple of factors. First, the price. Whether you want to pay extra to have the full frame R6 sensor, which is better for low light shooting conditions, but then having to live with the possibility of overheating when using this camera for extended periods when you're filming. Or you could spend a little less money, get a newer camera like the R7 over here that can film for longer periods, but then you have to accept having a smaller sensor, albeit with a larger pixel count, but still prone to noise and grain in lower light conditions. So yes, it will depend a lot on what you are planning to create and what you want to use these cameras for. So what do you guys think? Are you leaning towards a Canon R6 or R7 or something else entirely? Let me know your comments down below. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon to never miss an update from us. And now that you've watched this video, make sure that you check out my top 10 reasons to get a Canon R7 video over here. In the meantime, stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement, and inspire. And I will catch you next time on Kai Creative.